Have you tried using lifesteal to its fullest before, Tarnished? We're getting into April already, only two months away from the elusive shadow of the Erd Tree DLC. I bet you're spazzing with anxiety at the thought of finally being able to play Miyazaki's new masterpiece. But hold on, are you properly geared to take on the DLC? That Mesmer the Impaler guy seems to be quite the big deal. And judging by what we've seen, the Land of Shadows is going to be no piece of cake either. Not only that, but rumours are running around claiming that the DLC will bring in a new levelling system that might just reset your character upon entering the Land of Shadows. We don't know to what extent your character will be reset, but whether you're new to the game or this is your 69th playthrough, it is better to be as prepared as possible for the new system. And what better way to do that than crafting a brutally strong foolproof build made to circumvent the new levelling system and capable of carrying your wobbly butt to Mikella's lair, where you're going to shadow all all over the Erd Tree or something like that. Lifesteal, as a mechanic, exists in Elden Ring and is provided to the player via weapons, talismans and some skills like, well, Lifesteal Fist. The thing is that if you only use one of these items separately, the benefits of their lifesteal properties are not that great. For instance, if you only use the Great Horn Hammer, you'll get 3% of your maximum HP back per enemy kill, which means that you will need around 2,000 health to only get a measly 60 HP back. But if you combine many of the right lifesteal items into one build, you will achieve something like this. This build makes traversing areas extremely easy, since any mistakes you make will be undone simply by disposing of any enemies in the vicinity, even birds and animals. However, if you're new to the game, I recommend you play the game normally and focus on saving your upgrade resources for the weapons we're going to mention in the video, in case you want to try the build yourself. To whip up the ultimate version of this build, we're going to need a few key ingredients. Firstly, we're talking about a strength plus faith build here, so kicking things off with a class like the Vagabond or Samurai will give us a solid foundation. These starting classes offer a decent balance of dexterity and strength to handle most early game weapons, and they come with a hefty dose of vigor, which is essential for our purposes. Don't worry about faith just yet, we won't be needing it in the early game. Our focus will be on four main items, the Serpent God's Curved Sword, Taker's Cameo, Blasphemous Blade, and Rykard's Great Rune. These goodies will be the backbone of our lifesteal powerhouse. And since regular mobs are not the only thing that exist in Elden Ring, we're also going to use Star Fist to destroy all types of bosses. Now, let's put your intelligence to good use and do some math. The Serpent God's Curved Sword will patch you up with a solid 25 HP plus 2.5% of your maximum HP per enemy kill, while the Blasphemous Blade does even better, doling out 40 HP plus 4% of your maximum HP. And here's the beauty of it, the healing kicks in whenever anything croaks nearby. No need for you to be the executioner, just having these weapons in hand will trigger the effect. Taker's cameo ups the ante with 30 HP plus 3% of your maximum HP, while Rykard's great rune really delivers the goods with a hearty 80 HP plus 7% of your maximum HP. If you're carrying all of these things properly, you're looking at a guaranteed 175 HP replenishment every time something meets its demise within your sphere of influence, regardless of your maximum HP. Factor in the 16.5% of your maximum HP, let's say you've got a beefy 60 vigor for a healthy 1900 HP, and you're looking at an additional 313 HP, that's a 488 HP windfall for every enemy that bites the dust in your vicinity. With just four goobies, you're back to full health. Nice. But wait, there's more. The Ash of War of Blasphemous Blade heals you for 150 HP plus 10% of your max HP for every enemy hit. Translation, if you snuff out just one poor soul with Taker's Flame, you're getting a chonky 828 HP infusion. That's more healing power than a fully upgraded Flask of Crimson Tears, and all it costs you is a mere 30 FP per cast. Plus, it can cleave through multiple enemies at once, making the task even easier. Now that you 
you know how juicy the build is, it's time to craft it. The most important thing is for you to remember to put all of your stats on Vigor, only increasing other stats if you need to wield weapons. If you start Samurai, you'll already have a bleed weapon to deal with most early game enemies with ease. But if you start Vagabond, simply by getting to the death-touched catacombs in Limgrave will secure you the Uchigatana or getting to Weeping Peninsula will secure you the Morning Star. Both easily accessible after talking to that one-eyed goober for the first time and making friends with Torrent. I recommend getting both, since the Morning Star provides good strike damage which is needed for some enemies, while the Uchigatana has a smoother moveset and slash damage. Now, if we're going to go straight for the build, we'll first need to kill two shard bearers to get us access into Lendel later. To prepare for this, we'll get the Sacred Blade Ash of War from this scarab near the Third Church of Marika and infuse any of your two acquired weapons with it. Next, we will unlock Round Table Hold. Simply go to the Dragon Burnt Ruins in Nagil Lake in Limgrave. Enter the basement and open this trap chest to teleport yourself to Celia Crystal Tunnel. Use the rear exit and hug the swamp to your left until you reach the Celia Understairs Site of Grace. There, the one-eyed goober will teleport you to the round table hold. Now we'll obtain the first half of the Dectus Medallion in Fort Hate, located in the Mistwoods. And the second half in Fort Farrath, located in the Dragon Barrow. I know it sounds like a hard task, but it's actually stupidly easy, since you only need to reach Kalid and ride Torrent East, avoiding everything from the Rotview Balcony site of Grace until you reach the fort. Then, you just enter the place, go up the stairs and get the other half of the medallion. Also, while you're there, get rid of Greol for some free runes. And if you're feeling adventurous enough, you can follow the trail from Kalem Ruins all the way to Redmain Castle to get Flaming Strike. If you don't get it now, we'll still get it later, so you can do as you please. With all of this, it's time to fight Margit, complete Stormvale Castle, fight Godric and unlock Lyurnia of the Lakes. You can go back and get Godric's Great Rune if you wish to do so, as it's a nice little boost to have. <laughs> more to the north and then go straight to Raya Lucaria Crystal Tunnel to defeat the Crystallian and get the bell bearing to be able to upgrade your equipment more easily. Find the snake girl in this area near the telescope, retrieve her necklace from Bogart and give it back to her to receive the invitation to Volcano Manor. This is extremely important. Now we'll head all the way north to get the Serpent God's Curved Sword. You'll save time by starting from the Raya Lucaria Crystal Tunnel and simply following the path to Ruin Strewn Precipice. Climb up until you find the area with the big octopus and get the sword from the corpse near them. Now that you have it, simply have it equipped in your left hand and you'll heal anytime anything dies near you. Time to clap the second shard bearer and it's none other than my mum. Yes, you're going to clap my mum. You clown. Get the key to enter the academy from this area, avoiding the dragon, of course. Go to the entrance of the academy, ignoring everything in your path. Enter the academy and proceed through the level normally as linearly as possible. Put Sparky to sleep. Meet my mum and get rid of her and her army of miners. The Serpent God's lifesteal ability will come in handy very well for this fight. After you clap my mum's cheeks, it's time to leave Leonia and go to Volcano Manor. Go back to the site of Grace after Godric and head to the Grand Lift of Dectus by covering the Easter landmass of Leonia and heading north. It's pretty straightforward. It just takes forever to get there. Go up the oversized elevator once you get there and meet the Snake Girl yet again so she can teleport you to Volcano Manor. In here, you'll want to talk to the Snake Lover and her simp to join the Slimy Guild and complete her missions. The first letter you find will have you beat a dude in Limgrave. Go to the Limgrave Coliseum, invade him and tear him a new one, then go back and receive your reward. For the second letter, the dude to invade will be an Altus Plateau. So head back to the Grand Lift and simply go to the marked spot on the map, invade his butt and then slap it to complete the mission. Go back to Volcano Manor, receive your reward and take the third letter. For this one, you'll have to go to Mountaintop of the Giants, which is the reason why we clapped Godric and my mom. We needed the access to Lanedell. Follow the path from the Grand Lift of Dectus to the area with the two tree sentinels. Ignore everything in here and simply activate the grace. 
Hey, yo. Now, instead of continuing to Lane Dell, we'll take a detour to this small lake to enter the sealed tunnel and acquire the second smithing stone miner's bell bearing, as well as activating the sealed tunnel's grace, as we'll need it for later. Head north and summon the bull goat dude to beat the draconic tree sentinel and enter capital city. In here, you're going to want to ignore everything and make your way to the Colosseum first to get the star fist. Go up the tree roots and beat Godric's ghost with your newly obtained star fist and continue making your way to the Queen's bedchamber to fight Morgoth. <coughs> Once you beat the Erdtree Simp, teleport to the Avenue Balcony site of Grace. Go to your left and follow the road while ignoring the enemies to reach a lift. Keep following the only path possible and go down the lift to reach the Forbidden Lands. Use your upgraded Starfist to beat the Blackblade annoying piece of shit and go up the Grand Lift of Roll to reach Mountain Top of the Giants. Get the map. Ignore absolutely everything and head straight for the marked spot to beat Hoslo. Avoid his dick whipping and crack his skull with Starfist R2 attacks. Go back to Volcano Manor and receive the second item of importance, the Taker's cameo. It is now time to fight my snake, bro. Family. Talk to the crazy a bitch and teleport to Rykard's arena. If you have another great spear, equip it in your right hand and equip the Serpent Hunter in your left hand. Spam the Crouch L1 attack to deal a metric f ton of damage to my brother and remind him that our family doesn't like him anymore. With his remembrance acquired, go back to the Round Table Hold to obtain the Blasphemous Blade. Only one more thing to go, my bro's great rune. Go back to the sealed tunnel and reach the end of the area. Beat the scrawny gravity hobo with your newly found serpent Serpent Dong and climb to the top of the Divine Tower to obtain Rikard's Great Rune. The Life Steel build is now complete. The only things left to do would be to level up as much as you need, focusing on getting 60 Vigor, 40 Strength and 50 Faith. Getting the Red Hot Wet Blade from Red Main Castle is also needed, so you can infuse some of your weapons with Flame Art and the Iron Wet Blade from Stormvale Castle to unlock the Heavy Affinity, in case you run into fire and holy resistant enemies. Endure or Crag Blade for the Starfist will also be very useful when dealing with bosses, as Starfist have massive DPS to take care of them, or you can also use Blasphemous blade. The important thing to know now is that you'll never have to worry about health in open areas anymore. And that would be pretty much it. We believe this build will be very strong for when the DLC makes its appearance, as it will give you a very easy time completing the open areas and you'll have a very heavy hitting weapon to use against bosses. The run to obtain all the things was completed in a few hours. But of course, you can take your time to do as many things as you want before obtaining the main items. These would be the final stats for a meta level version of the build, in case you don't want to leave the meta multiplayer range. So good luck obtaining all the things and we hope to see you in the manor soon. Bye.